over the last, uh, I would say, is uh, last year, uh, everybody has heard about ChatGPT uh, and what uh, people can do with LLMs. Uh, it has come to a uh, forefront. It's like the iPhone moment for AI. Uh, there has been a lot of work that we've seen happening. Uh, and over the last five years, you'll see is the number of papers that have gone into LLM and uh, research has just skyrocketed. Uh, from Transformers uh, and Bird introduction by Google in 2018 to GPT-3 by OpenAI in 2020, uh, that has just opened the doors in terms of what uh, those capabilities, uh, what people can do with those kind of uh, uh, frameworks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of companies will need to make uh, this uh, infrastructure spend as they move forward and start uh, using these large language models for their environment, uh, for their applications going forward. And here uh, at NVIDIA and at, with our partners, DDN, we are here to uh, help them through that journey. It's not that they have to start from scratch. We at NVIDIA have learned a lot and are making it available to our customers and all the rest of the world so that they can consume this technology as we move forward. Very storage intensive generative AI. I, you know, and this is where you come into this story, isn't it? Because you uh, have to work closely with NVIDIA if we're going to get the performance we need. Yes, uh, don't we know it? Um, <laughs> we finished on this picture here. I've got a similar picture on the next slide. Here we are. Here's a very sort of example system. You can see the DDM storage. I'm going to talk about the data in the storage. And here's. <laughs> EDM system and housed inside one of these super pods. So yeah, I said, don't we know it? We've been working with NVIDIA now for three years on Selene, and they genuinely have been running these very, very large scale production applications. And of course, coming across data challenges, challenge with storage. And then we've been developing essentially fixes or optimizations to those right over that period, very actively, very back and forth, which means the reference architectures you get are really the fruits of real at scale AI at the very largest scales in very tight combination between ourselves and NVIDIA. So let's have a look at this system and hopefully in the next three minutes, people will get a really good idea about how the data is moving. So here's a, a DDM storage system. And here are a number of NVIDIA DGX systems. And actually what they're doing is running containers typically across the GPUs. And we are also running virtualized servers and storage inside of our storage system. And what those lines are linking it are the data paths. Each one of these containers, each one of these AI frameworks can talk to all the storage servers simultaneously. And this picture, I've only drawn one of our storage systems, but you know, at, at NVIDIA with Celine, there's like 48 of these, and we can provide a single seamless namespace at one mount point for everything to make it super simple. Um, so inside here, there's a couple of bits of magic happening. Um, firstly, the thing to note is we've got some intelligence running in the DGX. We've got some software right there, and we also optimize on the network. So we're not just a storage system. It's different from NFS-based systems, different from NAS systems. We have intelligence in, in the compute side right next to the applications. So this intelligent client, the main point about a parallel file system, if people sort of want to know anything about parallel file systems, they should remember this, is that the clients know where the data is and they go get it directly. And what that avoids is a big amount of in inefficiency. Imagine if you didn't have that, then those clients have to go to a server, then that server has to go and do another thing and go get the data where it, where it resides. Because our clients are installed on the DJXs, we can basically half the complexity of the system, remove backend networks and improve performance. We also do this very fast networking. We've got a very fast networking layer and you can imagine it's not explicit, but from this picture, handling the networking across all these containers through multiple rails on the DGXs, through big networks to multiple storage systems in an NFS world with traditional IP addresses, that could become a, a bit of a nightmare. We really take all that problem away and because we're managing the network as well. So it's, it's very, very simple to manage those networks and very fast. Then finally, of course, the storage itself is scale out. So you have, I've just drawn one system here. We have many of those systems, but they just form one seamless namespace. 
I want to ask both of you, because one of the stories we keep hearing is the shortage of supply of expertise in how to build these kind of architectures to get this capability. And um, the clock's ticking, so uh, a, a lot of organizations are having to build this fairly quickly. I would imagine there is potential to make some huge errors, some career-ending bad decisions on uh, on this. What would that be? How do we avoid doing that sort of thing when we're creating this capability, James? Well, firstly, fortunately, the ecosystem, the software ecosystem has moved on an awful lot from what it was a few years ago. It's dramatically simpler to do. So we trained the model ourselves. Um, we um, essentially took an open source kind of equivalent of ChatGPT. We trained our own documentation using the H100 system we have in our labs. Um, and in fact, those graphs I showed you were part of that, that little program. Um, so as a, as a company, really without, you know, AI framework running expertise, we were able to do that uh, within a few weeks and get our own model trained to answer our support staff's questions on our own documentation. So much, much simpler than it used to be. But when you go to scale, then of course, everything is difficult. And that's really the problem we're trying to solve is trying to make sure when you essentially it's spending that amount of investment, not only the infrastructure, but on the data scientists, the data, et cetera, that we give you the lowest risk, highest efficiency solution uh, from end to end. And that's really what this is all about. Yeah. Prima, what do you think about how uh, the best ways yeah. to go about this? Yeah. I agree. Uh, and and what we're trying to do is we are trying to democratize AI. Uh, if you if you hear Jensen talk about it and you hear a lot of admittees talk about it, is we're just trying to make it easier for everybody to consume uh, and start off from a much uh, much easier place rather than have to struggle through this, right? We've gone through that struggle, we've documented it, and we've made it available through reference architectures. Uh, we have uh, uh, the software and the frameworks already available, so they can start with that. And then, as James said, they can go and play with so some of these things on the reference architectures with that hardware rather than having to figure out what that hardware that they want to invest in. Thank <laughs> you.